This video is kindly sponsored by Squarespace. 986 Porsche boxer prices have been steadily on the increase for a few years now. Of course, the pandemic has skewed the true value of cars, with used cars in general increasing in demand and by value by a considerable percentage. But here are the reasons why I think you should buy a 986 generation Porsche Boxster. Firstly, your say partner or wife is telling you it's a ridiculous idea to buy a sports car because it's impractical and what a waste of money. Well, firstly, you can tell them now that actually they're great value at the moment and potentially an appreciating future classic, as people like to say. But also you can tell them it's very practical because this car actually has two boots. That's right. It's mid-engined, which means there's a boot in the front and a boot in the rear. And interestingly, the one in the front is probably the most cavernous of the two. Let me demonstrate. <sighs> My butt's not even touching the floor. And although I can't quite sit down in the rear boot, it's also quite big. You can get a smaller size suitcase in there. But in that, you can get a full size suitcase because it's so deep, it's probably almost, I don't know, a meter deep? Or if you're American, a meter deep. Very, very good. Ticks all the boxes in terms of practicality. So tell your wife to stop being a big old bore and get rid of the Ford C-Max. You could get at least two children in there. Just saying. So let's next talk about the styling of the 986 Boxer then. Although it is quite subjective, I do understand that. In fact, if you'd asked me a couple of years ago what I think of the looks of this car when I was driving my BMW Z4, I probably would have told you it's hideous. But I would now disagree with my previous self because I do think these cars are already aging tremendously, tremendously well. Now, if you go for a facelift model, which is basically 2003 onwards, this car is a 2003, so just fits into that category. There's a couple of updated styling cues, namely the fried egg headlights are done away with. Now, actually, some people like those and I think they look quite classical, to be honest, but you get the clear sort of side indicators down there and the clear headlights and sort of the red brake and indicator lights at the back as opposed to orange or the fried eggs at the front like I mentioned. Also from 2003 the rear windscreen came in glass. I believe in the earlier models it was plastic which caused a few issues with them snapping and bending and not being very good so that's another big bonus more so in terms of sort of practicality and comfort. Interior wise as mine has I think again as standard from 2003 onwards the cars came with a three spoke steering wheel as opposed to the sort of four spoke one which is a little bit more dated I suppose you could say and this one I really really like the wheel actually it's probably my favorite part of the interior I think it's just a gorgeous piece of something to look at very nice to hold as well so for me yes everywhere you look at this boxer I don't think it really has a bad angle I have to say obviously it's very biased because this is mine but I really don't think it does I think the wheels look great and feel the arches lovely in fact even without spaces they come out so so well and just don't leave any sort of big voids i love these intakes actually i think this one is this one redundant i think only one of them works and i think it's on the driver's side this one is actually a redundant intake correct me if i'm wrong and then on the rear you've just got these huge haunches and on the front the very same it's just a perfectly balanced and ergonomically nicely styled car and of course mid-engine as well so you just know that there's a big lump of a flat six right behind where you sit which we'll get onto in a bit and then the interior let's talk about that so as well as the wheel that i mentioned being really nice i do think well no i'm not going to tell you that the interiors age particularly well it's all very analog this whole central piece here where you have the radio and the air conditioning controls looks dated um, i have to admit but it is very simplistic there's no sort of ugly screens or anything that really really shows off its age but then again i have to say the other bonus of the fact that this car is quite analog and basic is there is a sort of special element to it certainly when i had the z4 it didn't feel special to sit inside this does now that's probably helped by the blue leather the big porsche badge but certainly these huge analog dials with a rev counter right in front of you you've got the indicator stalks here as with most cars but these ones are just very sort of flimsy and delicate to use which i love it just makes the car feel more classic 
there's lots of reminders here that you're in a Porsche, of course, here. You've got Porsche logo on the gear knob, Boxster S down here, Porsche on the handbrake, and of course the Porsche crested headrests on the seats. And like I say, I just, I just love it in here. I think it's lovely. My favorite thing though of all has to be the fact that it's all carpeted. Everywhere you look is blue carpet, down on the ground, on the side, um, by the doors at the back here. And um, yeah, I do really love it. I actually much prefer it to my former Z4 interior. Maybe not as practical and actually there's less room in here. It is quite cramped in here, especially with the roof up. I'm only 5'9 and it does feel cramped, I have to say. So that's probably one of the main drawbacks of this Boxster. But from an occasion perspective, it does feel like more of an occasion uh, than the Z4. And, and I think compared to lots of things, it feels really, really special and just lovely in here. Let me say a huge thank you then to Squarespace for sponsoring this video and supporting this channel once again. I've been using Squarespace over the past, well, two or three months now to build my own website for the It's Joel channel. And as I've been using Squarespace more and more, I've been getting to grips with more of the tools that are available. For example, with Squarespace's email campaigns function, I can create email content and send out to my viewers from the click of a button. If you are just getting started though, Squarespace is super intuitive. There's hundreds and hundreds of templates for you to choose from when you're looking for inspiration on how you'd like your site to look. So if you are looking to design your very own website, look no further. Head to squarespace.com forward slash it's Joel to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain using the code it's Joel. Back to the video. So this is the best bit of my job then. This is the part where I get to drive the car and tell you about all of the wonderful things that it has to offer you as a driver and a potential owner. First and foremost, this car is mid-engined, which inherently just gives you a number of qualities which are really, really difficult to replicate in a car that's more conventionally engined, whether it's front or rear. The balance of this car is second to none and you really feel it when you're pushing on around corners. The way this thing stays planted is like nothing else I've ever driven. The other bonus of having the engine right behind me is the noise you get. Because it's right there, you get the sensation of noise from a place that you otherwise wouldn't expect it. Not to mention as well, you feel the vibration from that engine literally in the back of your seat because that's where it is. performance perspective then, the car's not slow but it's not particularly fast either. We're doing 25 miles an hour now, I'm going to put my foot down in second gear and we're now up to 60. So on paper at least this Boxster S variant should do 0-60 in around 5.7 seconds and that is not fast by today's standards by any means. However, what I can say about the power of this car is that well, for example, with the RS6 that I just had and just reviewed, the car I had on loan from Audi UK for a couple of weeks, that thing, when you put your foot down, the local police or constabulary are waiting to pull you over and give you a ticket. Whereas if you put your foot down in this thing, the local police are waving as you go past because you can use all of this power that the car has to offer without getting yourself into too much trouble. Now that's of particular interest to me in this car because of the way that this thing revs out. You can go all the way through first and second without breaking any laws. And this car is extremely addictive to rev out. That's exactly what the car wants you to be doing. It tops out at around 7,000 RPM, but if you do go ahead and hit the limiter, It bounces off like that, which is so, so much fun. So what about the gearbox in this car then? Well, mine is a six speed manual, which is what I'd strongly recommend you go for. And it's a really challenging gearbox, but not in a frustrating way, but in an involving and very, very satisfying way, because it does make you work to get the shifts right. Sometimes you struggle to find exactly the gear that you want, but 
in the moments when you do get it right and you can put together a nice heel and toe and rev match it down into second or first gear like that, that wasn't very good. It's really, really rewarding. And then you just floor it and get to do it all over again. So like I say, the car just feels fantastically balanced. And here we are on a lovely British B road on a sunny day. And I'm well under 60 miles per hour, which is the speed limit on this road. Yet I'm still feeling like I'm having to wrestle this car and thread it through the needle that is this road. And what else is there that's around 5,000 pounds that gives you that same level of involvement and satisfaction than the Boxster? You really can feel absolutely everything that those wheels are doing. Let's try and get a rev mat into second there. And every lump and bump in the road you do feel, which I would say is a slight disadvantage, is that it is a very firm car. It's very much set up for this sort of spirited driving. And so as a daily cruiser, there's better alternatives, maybe an SLK or a Z4. However, I don't want to be in an SLK or a Z4 right now because this right here would not be as big in either one of those cars as it is right now in this moment in my Porsche Boxster S. So before I conclude this video then, I'm gonna pull over once more and just point out a couple of buying tips for the car and one particular modification which I think is essential for all Boxster owners if you don't have one yet or if you already do. Not all boxes are created equal. In fact, when you're in the market for one of these, options are a big thing that you want to look out for. And um, one thing that I didn't realize when I bought this car is that it doesn't have cruise control. It can be a little bit confusing because there's actually two stalks as standard here. This lower one is for changing the sort of display on the screen in front of you, but there's actually a third stalk for cruise control. Not too much of a problem because I'm gonna be getting it retrofitted for just a few hundred pounds in the future. But look out for that if you want cruise control, there should be a third stalk. <sighs> and lastly then, once you have bought your Boxster, one thing I can thoroughly recommend is getting yourself one of these. It's an FM transmitter. It just plugs into your cigarette port like that. And you can connect your phone to it via Bluetooth. Then using the radio frequencies, you can match it up with the transmitter. And voila, you have Bluetooth connectivity for music on your phone. Now this car had the Parrot system installed when I bought it, but I just hate the way that it looks. It's sat up here and just looked horrible. So I got that all removed. These you can pick up from about five quid off Amazon and just plugs in and you can play your music. Sound quality is not 100% with these. You can pay more for better ones, of course, but strongly, strongly recommend one of these as a solution so that you can play music through your phone. Well then, there we have it. There's why I think you should buy a 986 Porsche Boxster. Now, if you want the contrary, go ahead and click in the top left-hand side of the screen and watch the reasons why I say you shouldn't buy one of these. But I have to say, to be honest, there's numerous more reasons why you should than why you shouldn't. They are fantastic value for money. They give you a driving experience that you'd have to pay tenfold for ordinarily with another car. And at the moment, you can pick them up at pretty reasonable prices. So wait no longer, go and get yourself a Porsche Boxster. I definitely can recommend the S. And I definitely recommend getting yourself a later facelift model. Thank you all so much for watching. Please do comment below your thoughts on the video, but also on the Boxster. And there's some more exciting content coming with this car. Actually, we're doing some modifications before later in the spring. I'm gonna be taking it to one of my favorite places in Germany, let's just say that. So thank you all so much for watching. Please do take this opportunity now to subscribe to the channel. We're almost at 60K. If you're one of my 75% of viewers that are not already. Thank you all so much, and I'll see you very, very soon.